Hello, welcome everybody to another episode of the Heavy Metal Citadel podcast. Right, we've got Chernobyl Glove and Short the Crop Professor here, and today we have a very special guest mm-hmm. in the form of PG from the band Groza. How are you, bro? Hey, what's up? Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course, man. It's hey, a pleasure. Bro, I've been looking you. forward to this. Yes, and uh, yeah, me too, man. Germany. Pretty. You, business as usual as we say so uh nothing's really changed yeah of course the situation right now with prices going up and shit like that but uh yeah it's been fucked for the last two years so same old shit i'd say yeah. I imagine. is there any is, do you think there's any impact on that in terms of like you guys touring um i guess like eastern europe and whatnot i've just been talking about this today with a with a friend of mine because mm-hmm. We are playing a small little European tour in in August, I guess, late August, beginning of September this year. And the other band, uh, Raven Throne, that's on the bill, is from Belarus. So, oh, uh, yeah, and they've already fled to other countries because of the situation there, and nobody knowing what's what's going to come next. So uh, it's it's pretty chaotic for them at the moment. I understand. So uh, nobody knows if they will have time or. Uh, be able to to go on tour in August, so uh, yeah, it's pretty chaotic on that side. So, I think the not not that we have shows in in that kind of territoriums, but um, yeah, the other bands that we are playing definitely have have more to worry about in that sense than us. So yeah, hundred percent. We'll I guess yeah. Well, fingers crossed. Um, yeah, everyone comes out of this okay and we can fucking kick it up again. It seems like everything just keeps fucking us over. If it's not yeah. COVID, it's a fucking war. Then it's so something cool. else. Absolutely, yeah, it's yeah. that way, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, how's, how's the reception been for, for the new album, man? It's, all, it's been like a year now. Yeah, kind of like, uh, I guess in August, I think we released it. But yeah, uh, pretty good. I can't complain. Um, we we didn't expect any any of the stuff that we've gotten. I mean, the press has picked up on it and... Uh, yeah. A lot of people have have uh, joined us in in listening our, in our music, listening to our music and stuff like that. So uh, mm-hmm. it's definitely not overwhelming. I'd, I'd not say that, but um, it surprised us in that sense that uh, how many people care about the record and uh, shared their thoughts. And uh, yeah, so I couldn't complain. Yeah, and you've been um, being able to tour for some of this record, haven't you? You played a couple of shows. Uh, already, you did that very kind of social distancing tour, but you've also yeah. uh, played at uh, what was it, as a couple of festivals. So, mm. how, how does that feel? How is it in a live setting? Because I know you guys really value playing this music live and having people really feel it there in the moment. Yeah, uh, we feel quite fortunate to to um, having been able to play that many shows in, in the whole pandemic situation. Because a lot of other bands, uh, they basically haven't played for about two years now, which is insane to me. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've managed to to uh, have some shows here and there, mainly just stepping in for other bands, you know, like international bands that couldn't travel into the country because of restrictions and stuff like that. That's when we kind of stepped in for, for most of the festival shows. And uh, yeah, I think we've played like... 20 shows over the pandemic which is pretty good i'd say so uh impressive (laughs) yeah i mean yeah it's it's better than nothing i say it's much better than nothing we were having a pretty hard time seeing any show here during the pandemic in the uk so yeah it's not easy yeah like in germany they have they try to do a lot of social distancing shows with uh people sitting down and stuff and uh, people really seem to take that offer and and attend shows still even if it's not the same of course but uh yeah it feels a little different of course it's it's a little special vibe but i'd still rather play in that circumstance than not play at all because that's yeah so you're saying we'll not play a a show with people sitting down yeah we have quite a few actually yeah Fucking name. Let's go to that. <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say though, because on my chair, you know, it's okay. it's strange, but it it works. You the, yeah. the vibe was special in that way because you you noticed that people were hungry for concerts, if you know what I mean. They were like really hyped and into the moment and stuff. So uh, at some shows that were uh, taking place with people sitting down, the energy was even better than 
than shows yeah. we did before the pandemic because people just were yeah. bored with concerts taking place like every week or something like that. So honestly, people the, value the that so much in yeah. time. They'll remember when they sat down at yeah. a show with black metal man playing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah it's strange, but in their lifetime. Yeah, so, yeah. Gonna do. <laughs> I was, I was going to ask, though, in terms of shows, I mean, you guys played with uh, Mugwa in, in Berlin, right? Yeah, right. I got to ask, Nick, did they say anything? Like, did, have you guys had, like, a rapport with them? Have you guys chatted with them? Like, what's the deal? No, no. Uh, they had, like, a, a separate backstage room because oh, they were the headliners okay. on that date. So I don't think anybody really saw them. They are, from what I understand, quite reserved in that way. Yeah. Um, but no, we, we just quickly shared a few words when we had sound check because they sound checked as the headliner and we then were opening the night so uh, we kind of just as we as they changed the stage they uh had changeover and we set our stuff up but uh, we didn't talk about anything music i don't even i don't even uh know if they know about us or anything but uh, <laughs> yeah I, neither do i care i think they do mate let's be honest yeah what's uh, that they must know about you. I mean, you guys are are, are blowing up essentially. Who knows? <laughs> so okay, with this uh, with this latest album that you've got out, mate. Um, I know it's already well, like you said, you did it in August, and I have heard that there is potentially, uh, and I won't be jumping the gun, but potentially a third album coming out pretty soon here. Pretty soon is a pretty wide term for me, <laughs> then, but. Uh... We're constantly writing and uh, we finished a few first song ideas, but not that we, uh, I mean, we won't release anything this year in terms of a new record or something like that. We we planned. That was my next question. <laughs> yeah, no, a year. we're still writing and we don't want to hurry anything or we're not in a hurry to release anything. So we just take our time and write what we have to write and then we'll see from there. Absolutely. And do you see like a, a musical progression happen for you guys? Because obviously from the, the first album to the second, you know, there was a bit of an extension with some more post-rock influences coming in, the songs were longer, yeah. more melodic, deeper passages. Do you do you feel that you'll kind of continue down that route of more atmosphere, uh, longer songs and, and more experimentation in terms of instruments? Yeah, I, I see what you what you what you said there with the the difference from the first record to the second one. That's mainly because I was writing the first one on my own. Like eighty percent of it were written by myself because I started this as a solo worship project, if you will, and mm -hmm. uh, wrote most of the stuff and then got members to record the record. But uh, like the main structures and uh, everything was done when I when I asked the other guys. So it was just details basically that they contributed on the on the first record but with the second one they had a lot more influence in the songwriting which is also kind of the explanation why we have uh, broadened our sound in that way because just the other guys have different influences themselves and uh, so that's basically how that came about but in that regard i'd say we're not gonna make that big of a shift for the for the third record because it's the same guys you know but mm -hmm. uh you never know. We're experimenting at the moment. We try to not limit ourselves in, in any way. Mm -hmm. So um, if a special song calls for something that we haven't done in the past, then we'll try. And if the song needs it, then we'll do it regardless of what people expect from us or what we're we're not planning anything in that kind of perspective. So we'll just see it comes to what it comes to. You know? Cool. Yeah, I was wondering actually in terms of some of the lyrics that you've um, written, like I know that you said a lot of it comes to sort of personal emotions and whatnot, but mm -hmm. is any of it based on, uh, you know, philosophy or, or sort of classical literature? I'm just saying that because, I mean, I mean, Germany, you guys got some of the greatest philosophers around and there have been some references to sort of Greek mythology um, on the second album as well and sort of sort of nihilistic and chain themes. So mm -hmm. I'm curious about that. Yeah, it's it's kind of the same story as for the music i just write about what i i feel like i need to write about at the moment and uh sometimes i use as you said greek mythology just to you know paint a picture and have a like um image for for certain phrases or or whatnot but um it's not that i force myself to okay i'm gonna write a, a lyric with a reference to some some writer in germany or whatever it's just mm -hmm. 
what you feel it's very, it's very spontaneous yeah lyrics it's it's mostly done like uh, one lyric at a time like in one session i just whenever i feel like it um i start writing and then 80 percent of the time i finish writing that lyric uh, in the same session but um yeah, that's yeah really I, I don't plan anything so do you have to be in a certain mood for that kind of songwriting so yeah of course writing songs for Groza, you do, you do you put yourself in a kind of a different headspace or is it do you write when you're inspired by how you're feeling at the moment it's kind of a mixture it depends like uh, with music i tend to write a lot more continuously than lyrics lyrics is more like an outburst if i'm really feeling strange at the moment of feeling bad or um, mm -hmm. i think that that uh, phase where you're you know not not in the best spot mentally then i'll write as an as an outlet as cliche as that sounds but it's true mm. so um and with music it's i gather riffs all the time i have a guitar around everywhere i i, I am at my flat and stuff and i kind of play all the time and if something sparks my interest um i develop that further it's not that i'm i have to be in a certain mood or or anything to to mm come up with riffs or anything in the in the first place but um yeah, yeah. That's, that's lucky i think for a lot of bands and we've, we've talked to before as well it's, it's it's sometimes you know they have to sit down in the studio focus on writing songs yeah mm. i yeah. think especially when you know it grows as, as a band i know you start as, as a one-man project but now it's more collaborative i think there's you know some leeway where inspiration strikes Obviously, nowadays you could send people files; they send things back. You mm. work on in such a collaborative process, uh, so it's it's very much a fluid, flexible process nowadays. And it, with the rest of the band, do, do you get together, or, or is it more? Do you live very far apart from each other, and you, you send things back and forth in terms of songwriting, mm. uh, in terms of their input into the project? Yeah, we we kind of live all in the same area, like uh, the bass player, the other guitar player, and me. Yeah, we live in in like ten kilometers away from each other, so there's no problem there. We we have met in the past and just said, okay, we're gonna try and develop those ideas that we've gathered or whatnot. And uh, with our drummer who lives a little more remote, we just usually get together when we rehearse, which is not that often at the moment. But uh, when we get together, we uh, have all listened to the the riffs and the rough ideas that are have been sent. Um, between the guys and we then develop on that in the uh, rehearsing situation so but it's not that we like make an appointment and say okay we're gonna gather then and then and write songs now it doesn't work like that it's it has to be spontaneous for me and i have to be it, it has a certain vibe i can't i can't uh make an appointment for that so yeah, yeah. oh that's yeah. brilliant um, in terms of the second album as well, I am curious because you already have one music video out, which, by the way, fucking rocks it, mate. It was amazing. And I oh, think it's it's, okay. it's excellent. And I think that, that was done by your mate, Oliver. Uh, yeah. yeah. So and I, I saw he's done his other stuff for his own band, which is, again, absolutely fucking fantastic. So I, if I'm not mistaken, I think you said that you did want to do uh, a music video for Homewards. If uh, I think it was this year. You said you wanted to do it, but I'm not sure if you guys are still going to be able to do it. If so, please let us know because yeah. that last you one will know about it. <laughs> amazing, sure, yeah. absolutely <laughs> fucking amazing. Yeah, we're planning at the moment nothing specific, but uh, we're again gathering ideas for for a possible video for that one. So, um, but yeah, yeah, it's a tricky one because I like you know I think black metal itself. There's a lot of visual aspects of it compared to other types of metal. And it, it plays a part, you know, I think PG from your album artwork, you know, mm. the very kind of monochromatic style, uh, you know, the way you, you dress, the way you take the band photos, the, the way you perform, there yeah. is that visual element to black metal and that relies less on the people, I guess, themselves, but more on what the music conjures up and using the visual cues to actually conjure up that emotion from the music. Yeah, totally agree. I mean nature is always one of the main themes of black metal it always has been kind of and uh, i think just the the emotional value of the music really suits that image so um, yeah it's 
it's kind of tradition for black metal to be nature inspired and stuff like that and i think it makes perfect sense so so yeah. that actually is a perfect segue i was going to ask you in terms of the logo that if i'm not mistaken is tree of life or is that something else yeah it's uh it's a version of of the, the Yggdrasil, yeah and how did you come up with that is this just something that sort of like again it goes to the traditional roots of black metal or is there a story behind that yeah it has to do with with uh yeah not that we picked this because we wanted some cliche black metal thing on our records you know but uh <laughs> it just the whole first record was a lot more um, about nature and about yeah mankind exploiting earth and stuff like that and so yeah it, we didn't plan to use this for a longer period than just for the first record but uh, people just seem to to like it and it made sense the all the themes and the lyrics and the the image and stuff so uh, we just kept it because also we have it on our on our stage we have a um, how do you say it on my mic stand i have like uh I have the same symbol on stage and it looked really good and um it still it still feels like it's relevant with with even the new topics um so we just kept it it's brilliant man i was gonna ask also in terms of just to jump back a bit i know that the second album is a little bit more collaborative but do you actually do you think you're you get more when you're collaborating or do you like having like full control from start to finish it's just you um and then you go go away and deliver what you have it's a very good and difficult question for me because I'm, I'm both. Don't tell the truth. Don't yeah, tell the yeah. truth. <laughs> no. no, it's all right. But uh, yeah, it, it's a learning process for me because I am more on the side of liking to have control over certain things. And that's why I do everything myself. Like mm -hmm. I, I mix the record and stuff like that just because yeah. I like to be in, in control of what's happening. Um, so definitely that has made some not problems but uh, i had to rethink my approach to that when when it came to the other guys wanting to contribute more but i think that in the end it uh, turned out for for the best so because th they just have different influences they might have ideas on even my riffs like uh, even if i come up with an idea they might have a different interpre interpretation of that which i might have not come up come up with if it weren't for them so yeah Okay. I I think we've uh, profited from from that way of working big time. And so, do you think after the fact that you guys have done this sort of more collaborative second album, do you think that you've actually sort of streamlined the process? Because I'm sure it's taken more time in terms of the collaborative album than just you yeah. sort of delivering everything. Do you think this the third album will be a little bit faster in terms of delivering it to it to to sort of the, the audience? We'll see. I mean. <laughs> I, I haven't That's thought. That's why we're asking. Can I please have a third album, by the way? Yeah, we, you will have a third I'm album. Got yeah. some good guitar lines. <laughs> hit me, hit me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's of course it takes longer because everyone has a say and everyone has to be, you know, uh, pleased with with how things are going. And instead of just me saying like this is how it goes, you play this, you play that, which has been like uh, the case in, in in the past with the first record. But again, I think the the value that you get out of everybody contributing and uh, it's just the profit is way bigger than the extra time you have to spend writing songs. It's it's not about you, you don't have to make a compromise there. I mean, if if you want to have different influences and have everybody contribute, then it takes time, of course, but it's not an issue. So then it's just you have to wait longer and I'm totally fine with that. I have no hurry in, in that sense. So. It takes what it takes, and if it's more difficult, then so be it. Yeah, no, understood. I mean, there's definitely a lot of one man bedroom black metal bands who don't reach the same heights as they would have if they really allowed for that kind of collaboration style. Definitely. The difficult part of that really is to balance, I guess, the vision of, of one person and that really strong vision versus, you know, kind of. Uh, putting it open to to more people, and it's it's really finding, like you said, profiting from everyone else's inputs to make it so so much better, um, but really fulfilling also that one singular vision that the band has itself. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Awesome. 
Well, dude, um, what do you got going on in terms of shows? Because I know, like you said, uh, Saturday uh, this week, you've got uh, a show in, where was it? Uh, Switzerland. It's our debut show. Oh, it's the right. It's the debut. It's yeah, the debut. Lens- Lensburg is the, yeah. is the town. Again, with, with Oli and, and Firtan, who has, has made the video, as you have mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's awesome. Are you guys excited? Yeah, totally excited to catch up with the guys. I mean, we've played with them a bunch in, in the past and they've become friends and uh, it's always good to to catch up with with everybody and also to play of course that's the main thing that's why we're there and uh yeah again our swiss debut uh it was actually like on the day two years earlier we were supposed to supposed to play in, in switzerland but uh it was just when the pandemic pandemic kind of started so it's almost exactly two years later and uh it's finally going to happen so that gives us hope for upcoming shows and uh we just hope that Maybe everything yeah, stays at some right. point it's, that's the cool part. Part. yeah yeah sorry about brexit man. yeah sorry. i was gonna say uh we've been wanting for you to come to the uk for a while but i'm, I'm sure brexit has fucked you over yes uh, yeah fucked you over i mean <laughs> fuck you, don't, you don't you don't get any shows <laughs> i mean i'd love to play over there but i guess you're more fucked than me in that perspective so. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, i feel with you though yeah 100 percent, man um but yeah no, that, that's 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 exciting is there anything like that you guys are doing completely differently though now sort of the the post-pandemic era i suppose to sort of prep for shows because i, I yeah, figure if you guys get like one bad COVID test it's fucked yeah, yeah. Is there anything from like merch to how you appear online to shows? Like what's what's changed since 2019? In terms of merch, not much other than that we offer like face masks and shit like that. <laughs> but uh, other than that, it's pretty much the same. Also, when pre- preparing for shows or whatnot, it's it's still the same. Like at the moment we we wouldn't go to a bar maybe the night before or two nights before like you don't have to really uh put you in that danger of having a, a bad test right before the show and but um yeah i mean we've we've made preparations in the sense that we uh have recorded like backing tracks of of each instrument just in case anybody gets sick or whatnot so we could okay. possibly still right. play the show but um Great. we haven't had to use that until now and i hope that it's not going to be the case it's just if we had a really special or important show in that sense uh, then we we wouldn't have to cancel because of that but it's just eventually you know we we hope that we can all stay healthy and uh, play all together that's that's the, the best scenario for that so so when you when you do play live is there anything uh i mean obviously everyone has their sort of little rituals uh, before they do go play live, and I know you're very much in the moment. So, if you came to London and I was to offer you copious amounts of alcohol before the show, you would say, "I used to." Uh, <laughs> how, do, how, do, how do you make a sentence out of this? In the past, I would have probably said, "Give me," you know. But uh, uh, in the past, I, I didn't sing that much in bands, and as I'm the lead singer now, I have to kind of take care of my voice because I want to. I want it to be solid, you know, so I would probably decline on that one. But um, okay, so after, after the, the show, show always, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, and for our audiences, what do we give you when we go to see you at the show? German <laughs> beer. What are we talking about? Jack. Oh, alcohol. Yeah, again, in the past, I would, I would have taken the alcohol, but I actually, I've become boring and I don't drink anymore. So, oh, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. That's good. No, I, I applaud you, mate. It's I, for the yeah, point. yeah. I couldn't fucking do that, but that, I applaud you. My God. Yeah, it's you have other substances that you can. Do. It's not just alcohol. Oh, coffee, so yeah, yeah, um, brilliant. So, so you got a few more uh, things I think in terms of live shows booked for uh, this year, if I'm not mistaken. A lot of it is in Germany, and yes. I think you you got. Is there one show in Warsaw, in Poland? Yeah, it's next year. It's actually the first show of the uh, Harakiri for the Sky European oh, tour. I think the tour kicks off in Warsaw. Yeah. Wow, that's oh, yeah. awesome, mate. That's a great band. By then, hopefully, things will cool down. I hope. I really hope so. That would be amazing to tour with the guys. I mean, we've played in the past again, and uh, we've also played with Kark, which is uh, the, the side project of, of the singer of theirs, Jimbo. 
we've played with them a lot and he's become a friend so i'm definitely looking forward to to playing with the guys if things allow us to but yeah i, I try to be hopeful about it <laughs> stay positive <laughs> yeah you kind of have to what else is there to, to <laughs> yeah no you, you played with them tons of great bands in, in the past uh, I want to ask you something that, you know, I heard you talk about in another interview, and that's Synthwave. Uh, I'm a pretty big fan of Synthwave. I heard you are too. It's, it's, I think there's a very close connection to, to Synthwave because of bands like Perturbator uh, that really resonate with, with metalheads. Um, obviously, you know, I think you're a fan. Is there any kind of like other things outside of metal you listen to as well? Yeah, I listen to all types of, of music. I, I'm not limited in that perspective. I listen to pretty much anything that's that's good, really. So, uh, of course, metal is where I grew up in. And so mm. that's the, the majority of music that I listen to. But, um, yeah, I'd listen to anything if it's good. Like, I I have no, no orders there. Yeah, 100% agree. Brilliant, mate. Well, um, listen, thank you so much for this. Uh, this is now your time to say whatever you want in terms of uh, what you want the audience to hear, what you got coming up for shows, uh, where we can grab your merch, um, get one of those face masks, whatever substance you'd like us to send in the mail to you. <laughs> <laughs> now is the time to say it. <laughs> yeah, any final words for the audience? Yeah, just thanks for taking the time and listening to our music. And um, we we appreciate the support we get. Um, yeah, if you want to catch us live, we'll be playing plenty of shows in the next year and uh, the year after. So just check our Facebook and you have all the events there if you want to attend one of the shows. And in terms of merch, what is there to say? Uh, we just restocked on the, the vinyl for the first and the second record. I just got it in the mail today. So... That will be back on the on the Bandcamp store if you want to grab a, a copy of that. And we have shirts and hoodies and same shit everybody has. So if you want support, <laughs> Good stuff. Just, just take a look. As, and... long as, as long as they're black and white. <laughs> yeah. I'll yeah. Buy it for you, please. What else is there? <laughs> is there any color different than that? <laughs> That's what I don't think. Not for us. Not for us. CG, mate, I really appreciate this. Thanks again. Uh, Thank heavy you. Metal Citadel, Groja, PG. Uh, check them out, and we're gonna actually we're gonna play some music after this because Spotify lets us. Yeah, and we're not gonna get sued. <laughs> <laughs> not by me. <laughs> cool, man. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me, Jay. Guys, cheers. Ciao.